Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Monteverde Sequoia. Well, um, this is an interesting fountain pen coming from uh, Monteverde. I have to say from the get-go that this is actually one of my favorite fountain pens that I have from them. One of the very few that I like. It's a solid wall-built fountain pen that comes in, I believe, three kind of beautiful acrylics. Uh, personally, I choose the brown... Uh, and black version because of the more earthy colors that makes it look more like a tree nothing wrong with the other colors i just prefer these ones for this specific fountain pen the other thing about it is that when i first picked it up if i would have not known better and uh, it would have not had a uh, branding on it my first guess would have been that this is a ranga fountain pen i don't know why but that is how it feels to me the, the size of it, the construction of it, the way it's polished, everything reminds me of a Ranga fountain pen. And as an odd thing, um, after I got uh, the Sequoia, I also got a Ranga fountain pen in the same acrylic. And that made it even more confusing, to the point where it made me think if by any chance uh, Ranga made this fountain pen or not. As I said, uh, this is a pretty large fountain pen. I don't know if this is the largest uh, that Monteverde have made so far, but uh, just because it's large does not mean it's heavy. That acrylic uh, makes it pretty light. It does have a few metal bits here and there, but not enough to make it too heavy. However, when it is posted because of its length, there is a chance that you might uh, feel it a little bit top heavy. It does post fairly well and uh, secure enough so that cap won't go flinging around anytime soon. Speaking of the cap, it comes paired with a very stiff clip uh, and a nice band uh, fitted to it that gives the pen a little bit of character. I think the clip fits the pen quite very well and I like it. The only thing is it's stiff. I don't know how much you're gonna like that. Fortunately though, I don't really use clips for what they are, I just use them as roll stoppers and for that job it's perfect, it definitely stops the pen from rolling. The cap unscrews from the barrel without any issues, uh, it feels a little bit loose once you start opening it fitment wise, but not in a very bad way. Uh, the good thing is that once it's tied down nothing moves and uh, I never had any issues with it coming off loose. The pen comes paired with a decent number 6 uh, Yovonib, a fine size in my case, and it is mounted on a fairly short section, however fortunately the threaded part of the barrel is long enough and smooth enough to be used as part of the section and gives my thumb a good position and a fairly good grip as well. One small downside on this fountain pen is that they are using the metal uh, trims for the section that uh, has, well, metal threads and the barrel mounts on it. Be careful with this, the metal can easily strip the acrylic threads and uh, yeah, don't overdo it when mounting the barrel on. Other than that, I think the fondo pen is a pretty good success in my opinion from uh, Monteverde and a good looker too. Uh, well done. Uh, oh and by the way, converter is included as well with the fondo pen and they have that uh, silly screwing converter. And that's about it for the fountain pen presentation. Let's uh, get it ink and uh, do a quick writing test. Today I will be using an ink that comes from Monteverde and that I only used it once. I had it for a couple of years, but I forgot all about it, where I got it from and uh, what it is. Uh, because, well, I don't know what flavor <laughs> it is since it doesn't have the name on the bottle. The only thing that says on the bottle is Monteverde USA ink. And that's about it. That doesn't tell me much about the ink. And uh, to throw a wrench into my uh, waters as well, the label it's even green. So it's not even having the actual color of the ink. Speaking of the color of the ink, uh, it seems to be some sort of uh, orange red. So uh, the scribble outcome for today, it will be a complete surprise. And uh, as I was filling it, I was hoping it would be a good one. The reason I used it only once is because last time I used it, I forgot what font but I used it in. Uh, the ink dries um, oddly and creates some very interesting nib uh, boogers. Uh, one of the biggest I have ever seen um, and that did not really impress me very much. However, um, as I was going through my inks today, I 
stumble upon it and I decided to give it another try because it feels kind of a waste to just keep it in there and don't use it. Maybe it will work better with an actual Monteverde fountain pen, who knows. Anyway, I inked it up, um, I had no issues with uh, the fountain pen as I was filling it up. Uh, the pen started working right away without any kind of fuss. Pretty wide line from the beginning. What I do like is how bright the ink is as you lay it down on the page but then it starts to dry and becomes a little bit darker with a little bit of shine to it depending on how light hits it and how thick it is surprisingly i actually like it i guess i should use it uh, a little more often let's see if uh, it will build up any kind of boogers on this nib Anyway, the fountain pen basically overall performed very well with this ink on this paper for the writing uh, test. The only exception was on the reverse. For whatever reasons, uh, on this Muji paper, did not work at all. No idea why, but I guess it's no biggie. On the normal side of the nib, the line was fairly thin for a Yovo fine and uh, pleasantly wet for what I needed. So onto the scribble for today and see how it will perform on the Fabriano paper. Today was another day without inspiration. So I just basically started to draw some random squiggly lines on the page and slowly build up on them, hoping and praying something eventually will come out of it. And fortunately, well, eventually something did happen. I started to see a nose, then uh, some eyes, then uh, hair come along and then a weird body without legs or hands. So I guess he's some sort of a snail or maybe some sort of a hippie slug uh, that went out for a stroll. I sighed mostly with the fact that probably it is a slug since there is no house on its back. But then again, it would be impossible to see it behind all that luscious hairstyle that he has. Or maybe it's just a self-portrait from one of my previous lives, if I had any, if previous lives even exist. Um, anyway, I leave the decision up to you. What do you see? Bottom line is though that I have to admit I really like the end result. Uh, I'm, I was surprised by it and uh, um, happy at the same time. As soon as I figured out what shape I was working on and what I was... Uh, going to end up with, uh, scribbling uh, actually became even more enjoyable and uh, I ended up uh, being captivated with just adding line after line and slowly building up a form that has a little bit of depth to it. I think I could have uh, kept on going for as long as I uh, had ink in the fountain pen, but then I was a little afraid not to ruin it. So this time I listened to that tiny whiny voice in my head and, <laughs> and did stop. Probably all for the best. Uh, anyway, bottom line is I really like this type of loose drawings. I find them very uh, rela relaxing. I wish uh, I could always do this kind of uh, drawings. It's just I guess sometimes you get too stressed about the fact that you have no ideas and you start panicking. Anyway, not, not much to say about the drawing, to be honest. Uh, no thinking uh, was behind it, just putting lines on the page and discovering new forms. Literally, what you see, it's what you get without any deep meaning or thinking behind it. And going back to the fountain band for a bit before retiring back into my corner, Overall, um, it worked very well without much of an issue. One thing that did give me a little bit of a grief was uh, how the ink was flowing um, from the pen. I think this is because of the actual ink. I wonder if this is some sort of a waterproof ink or something similar. I don't know what's in it. I did not try to add some water to it, but maybe I should next time I use it again. It seems like the ink dries up pretty fast uh, and overall on the page feels like the platinum carbon uh, black ink. I don't know why I'm thinking of that one, but right now in this moment it feels the same on the page. Every now and then I had to open the barrel and push the ink into the nib to get it going again for whatever reason. Um, it seems to be maybe a little bit thick for the girth or the size of the converter. So I guess the surface tension was a little bit stronger with the sink inside the converter. 
Also another odd thing is when I was pausing for like 10, 20 seconds uh, or so, and I was looking at the drawing, you know, taking it in and seeing what direction the drawing wants to go, the nib was drying up and was taking a few strokes before ink will start flowing again. So I think the ink is the culprit in this case, not really the fountain pen. Because I do not remember having these uh, issues last time when I tried it with an uh, Iro Shizuku ink. But at the same time, I didn't really use it for drawing, I only use it for writing. The pleasant part though is that on this Fabriano paper the nib worked pretty decent on reverse as well. I actually end up using it on reverse quite a lot and that made it gain a few points back. As for the ink, I still have no clue what it is or what name it has. Uh, if you know it by any chance, please let me know in the comments below. Even though it did give me a little bit of grief, I have to say that I do like how it looks on the page. I would have probably liked it more if uh, when it dries would have been just as nice and bright as when you first put it on the page while it's wet. It's still okay as is, but I do like that brighter orange red uh, when it was wet. It also doesn't layer as much as the other inks that I have, but it's still just enough to give you some room to play with. Not bad overall, I, I could definitely see myself using uh, this ink again in the future. I'm gonna want to eventually try it with a little bit of a wider nib and see if I can eliminate the issues that I had or maybe use a fountain pen like an eyedropper or something that has a wider converter this way uh, hopefully I will reduce that um, surface tension anyway overall basically a success story for this week as well a beautiful fountain pen in my opinion one of the very few that I like from Monteverde that was paired with an unknown ink uh, from Monteverde as well that actually gave me some uh, beautiful uh, lines uh, and uh, I end up with a beautiful uh, scribble creature that I actually really like. What else could you ask for? I mean, I could ask for a lot of things, but uh, I doubt this poor fond pen could uh, deliver it. With that said, um, I guess I am at the end of my words again. Not sure if I mentioned it before, but I am actually a pretty quiet guy overall. All this talking a lot of, a lot of times or sometimes uh, during the videos makes me tired. Speaking of that, uh, I think it's about 3 a.m. right now uh, when I'm recording this uh, and I guess it's time to retire and uh, do some sleep before I wake up for the next day for work. And with that sad tone, <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I'll let you be and as always enjoy the rest of the time lapse in peace and quiet. Hopefully you still enjoy the music, if not I guess I'll have to find out something new. And uh, I will see you next time. I wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.